hardly a problem that we talk about that we can't lay at the doorsteps of abuse of the rule of law. If we're in problems financially or internationally, it's almost inevitably that problem came from the fact that we have been careless with the Constitution. That's right. And you know, it's magnificent. The Constitution is not complex. It's rather simple. We all can read it. Nobody can read the bills we pass in Washington. Nobody even understands them. <laughs> and many times they don't even allow us to have them before we vote on them. You know, they bring them, bring them up the last, the last minute. But if we would obey the Constitution, uh, we wouldn't have had the problems. But very simply, if we just go back to the Constitution, we could solve most of our problems. It's not that complex. Yeah. You know, the uh, federal government has been involved in infrastructure for a long time, even from the very beginning. Now, I could devise a theoretical free society where you still wouldn't even have the federal government doing much of anything, even that. But seeing the fact that we've been involved in infrastructure for a long time, just think of what's happening here in the last couple of days. The government, of course, is in charge of our highways and our bridges. But we had a terrible disaster yesterday. A bridge crate caved in. They say 60,000 new more bridges, if not more than that, are in the same situation. And uh, I would say the government doesn't do a very good job building bridges. But you know, the problem is, is they don't have enough money to look after things like that. Where's the money going? Well, first, we buy airplanes and bombs and helicopters, and we go over and bomb other bridges. And then we go and we build their bridges back up again. <laughs> so my suggestion is, don't bomb their bridges. Don't rebuild their bridges. Let's take care of our own bridges right here. not very sincere even coming from the other party these days, although they were elected to end the war. Um, they're talking about uh, redeployment, that is move back this way and that way, but not to leave. But as long as we're there, we're going to be antagonizing some people. But uh, we have 14 bases there that are there as permanent bases. Nobody in the government uh, that I know of are seriously talking about getting rid of those bases. But if we're going to leave and if we want to neutralize the situation there, we got to close down those bases and just get away from that. Yeah. Another, another obscene expenditure that I imagine many of you have heard about, and that is the embassy that we're uh, that we yes. built there. And um, it's it's uh, bigger than the Vatican. We're spending nearly you, we, we're spending nearly a billion dollars building this embassy. And they're going to have this huge, you know, wall around it, like they're going to protect it. It's sort of like, where, where's their thinking? I mean, what century are they in? Are they still back thinking they're building the China Wall or something? You know, but here they are. They don't even know about mortars coming over. It just, it just doesn't make any sense. And uh, even today, if you're in the green zone over there, you're not particularly safe. Uh, but it, it is understanding the culture, the history of that, uh, that area, understanding our Constitution. It, all these things seem so clear to some, some of us, and yet in Washington it, it, it continues. So the question always comes to me, why? Why did I do it? What's the purpose of that? And, you know, I don't know the exact answer because I think there are quite a few different answers for why our government pursues this, whether it's the Democrats or the Republicans. And um, quite frankly, I think oil has a lot to do with it. Yeah. A lot to do with it, you know, protecting. It's an old mercantilistic idea that you have to protect your natural resources, and if you did, you wouldn't get any. But Japan doesn't sit around worrying about how they're going to get their oil. They just go to Amsterdam and buy it. And uh, we, we don't have to have this idea that we protect our oil. That's why we were told we went into the Persian, the Persian Gulf War, which is really the, the war we have now is a continuation of that. It's all, it's all about oil. But it's all, some people are, uh, you know, idealistic uh, about spreading democracy. Sometimes I wonder, we probably ought to worry more about our democracy here at home rather than pretending that we can spread it around the world. Another event that occurred in 1913 that I'll bet you a few of you uh, recall and know about. 
that we need to deal with because it has a lot to do with why the government has grown so big. And that is we need to address the subject of the Federal Reserve. We need to get rid of it. Yeah. have to make conditions worse because today the Federal Reserve has caused a lot of problems yes. but turning a switch in one minute would not be the best solution we can have a transition on money just as we have transition in foreign policy cut back here spend over here help Social Security and there's no reason why it has to be dramatic and, 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 and radical but the simple things you can do is to just legalize the Constitution. Legalize what is legal tender. And that is gold and silver. Make sure it can circulate. And make sure you don't have to pay sales tax or income tax on it. And people then could use gold and silver as money. medicine and education. Education, of course, now is totally controlled uh, almost uh, by our federal government. In the old days of the Republican Party, like 20 years ago, they used to run on getting rid of the Department of Education. Not anymore. We get in charge and we double the size of the Department of Education. So uh, the, the best thing there is uh, you can't. You know, under the Constitution, you'd have public schools, but they'd be run locally. All my kids and our grandchildren all went through public school. And But we have to make sure freedom is legal, that we don't make it uh, so that they outlaw our choices. So we have to be certain that the government never comes along and says, you can't homeschool or you can't have private schools. You have to make it available. Now, one way you could encourage that is to make sure that those who educate their own children get tax credit and get some of their money back so that they can do it. <laughs> In medicine, it's the same way. We have so many people dependent on medical care uh, from the government, 60, 70 percent. When the government gets involved, they and pump a lot of money, whether it's into housing, education, or medicine, you don't get more quality and you don't get better distribution. What you get are higher prices. And that's what we have. In medicine, nobody's happy. The patients aren't happy, the doctors aren't happy, the laboratories aren't happy. It seems like the only people who are happy are the drug companies and the HMOs. <laughs> In medical care, so our choices haven't been very good. Uh, we've had sort of a of a uh, interventionist fascist system where corporations take over versus socialism. Right now, the move in Washington is to have socialized care, and uh, it just doesn't work. It, it doesn't work. I sort of like distribution of services and products, like we distribute cell phones and TVs and computers. Uh, prices go down there, but when the government gets on involved, the prices go up. This whole housing bubble that's collapsing before our eyes today has come about because uh, of the Federal Reserve System, excessive creation of credit. At the same time, those who say, well, poor people have to house houses too. So they, put, they, they emphasize these programs that puts a lot of people in houses, and lo and behold, a year or two later, they can't afford them, and then the housing bubble collapses. It's all predictable if you understand free market economics. It's, it's been well spelled out. And uh, this is not all that complicated, and it's something that we can achieve. It's available to us, and we don't have to uh, dramatically, uh, you know, change the views that we have about America. Now, what they would like to tell us, those who challenge us, is they, they will say, oh, what you're talking about is radical. This is radical. I claim the radicals are in charge, and we need to get rid of them. That is the ploy that they always use, the bleeding heart say, we care, we're going to give them a free house and free food and free medical care and free education. Well, what they don't say is, where do they get that free stuff? They have to steal it from somebody. Yeah. And the tragedy is, the theft 
is not is so often close to the P 